How's it going everybody, this is Beat the Bush. Today I'm gonna to talk about 20 additional ways you can make money online. The methods I cover in this video, it's gonna be completely different than the ones in the previous video. The next category of ways to earn money online is just generally through shopping sites. You have to buy something and then you get some amount of points or some sort of cash back. Take Swagbucks for example. If you sign up for this thing, you get 500 Swagbucks after you earn 500 Swagbucks. Each Swagbucks translate to one penny, so 100 Swagbucks is one dollar. My experience with this is that once you sign up for this, there are some low-hanging fruits offer where you can sign up for it without paying anything. You can get 20, 30 dollars worth of swag and then afterwards you can cancel out on all these trial offers and you can still obtain this free money. After after you do this initial run of using it for yourself, you can start referring other people. The next one is Ebates. This is another shopping site and I would recommend to not really go around shopping in order to earn money because in the end, the net effect is you're gonna be spending a lot more. And so you can think of it like, oh, you spend $100, but you get $10 cash back. This is not earning $10. In any case, if you're gonna spend money anyway, then this is a good way to not spend as much. The deal with the sign up bonus on Ebates is if you spend $25, you can get $10 cash back. It's just keep them in mind. And when you're ready to buy something online, you should go check all these sites to see if they have some sort of cashback deal and then use the one with the highest cashback. The next one is something yet just very, very similar. It's called Mr. Rebates. You get a $5 bonus after spending $10. All these rebate sites are pretty similar for me after you sign up for it and use it for yourself. You can then refer other people and get a commission bonus. The fourth one is pretty popular. You see ads on these all over the place, which is the Honey Chrome extension. It's whenever you buy something online, it's gonna apply all these coupons directly for you and try to get you a discount on whichever website that you're buying it off of. If you join Honey, you can get $5 right then and there through my referral link down below. And then after you get your own referral, you can then refer other people. You get 500 coins, which translates to about $5 of gift cards. You convert this into whatever gift cards you want and then this can supplement your Amazon shopping. The fifth way I make a pretty substantial amount of my income is through interest and dividends. The interest that I get is just through using a high yield savings account. And the current one I'm using is HSBC Online Direct. Right now you can get about 1.7% APY, but I am not sure how long this is gonna last, especially with the Fed funds rate going all the way to 0.1%. The other thing is through dividend yields. If you hold on to some stocks for the long term, then you're gonna start collecting dividends. So this is why Sometimes holding it for the long term is a really, really good deal. This is versus buying something and selling it too rapidly. A few of my high dividend yielding stocks includes IRM, which is at 10% right now, BAC 3.3%. IXC, which is a global energy stock fund, is 8% right now. T, which is AT&T, 6.9%, and this is not an endorsement to buy or sell these stocks. The sixth way I make money is through stock trading. You can basically do this anywhere, right? You can sit on a beach and stock trade. You can do this at home all you want. Of course, this takes a certain amount of skill and a certain amount of temperament in order to be able to make consistent gains over the years. My current standing is a very good gains on my Tesla stock, which is about $70,000 so far. I only count this because you can say, oh, you just made money on the Tesla stock. Maybe you lost a whole bunch of money somewhere else. The reason why I count stock gains as part of my online income is because the last few years I've been getting consistent gains mainly through what I call like my own fudge way of value investing, where I try to uh, buy a stock that I believe it's valued low and I try to hold pretty long term, roughly six months to 12 months or so. And then you might see me sell at certain times when I feel like the valuation is way too high. The seventh one is Bitcoin gains. And ever since I made this video where I sold at the top, I made this video about it and I never got back in. I actually held a very, very substantial amount of profits from that sale. And I never bought back in because sometimes I feel like once a fad of something. I know people are gonna knock me on saying that Bitcoin is a fad, but sometimes something gets hot and then after people look at it, it's no longer hot. And when it's no longer hot, that's why the asset prices are not where it used to be. That's why I sold out of it. I mistakenly did not buy back into it around 3,500 or so, but I did make permanent gains from that particular asset itself. And when you hear me count all this stuff, it's not like I have losses from you know, other asset classes that I'm not talking about so that my net gains is actually negative. My net 
net gains in terms of my net worth is actually gaining because of Bitcoin. It's actually gaining because of my stock trades. The eighth one, ninth one, and 10th one I wanna talk about, and I've probably beaten this to death plenty of times on my videos, is credit card churning, savings account churning, and investment account churning. I churn these accounts and there's various ways of doing it without spending your own money. Uh, one of them is through using a service called Plastic where you can essentially generate a lot of spending through your credit card. You have to pay a small fee of it. I think it's around 2.5%, but the bonus that you get on credit cards is roughly about 40% if you get the really good one. 20 to 40% or so. So if you pay 2.5%, it's okay to pay that as long as the net gain, you're still gaining like 17 and a half percent after you're done through with doing the whole churning thing. So with the help with this plastic thing, and I'll have a referral link down in the video description below, you probably can churn maybe like $20,000 of sign up bonuses versus if you don't use this, then you might only be able to churn maybe $5,000 because this is the max you can spend basically of your regular typical spending. Savings account churning is just your Chase Bank. I just churned a Citibank checking account. There's a whole bunch of different checking accounts that I normally do whenever I get mailings and stuff. So I plop in maybe $10,000, $20,000 into a certain bank account. They pay me a bonus of maybe $300 to $500 as soon as the period at which I have to hold that money in for let's say three months or something, I take it back out and then I churn yet another account and I just keep on doing this rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Same thing with investment accounts. I am not afraid of switching investment account because once you switch, sometimes there are difficulties with tracking your basis costs. As long as you don't do too active a trading, you can essentially track this yourself. 11th way to make money online is through eBay sales. And I'm gonna lump this in with the 12th thing, which is through Amazon sales, which is not as good for used things. Now, some of you might complain saying that this is not a real way to earn money, but it is if you happen to be a regular user of products and then suddenly like you decide to become a minimalist like I am. I am not a complete minimalist yet, but I have been reducing my stuff significantly so much so that over the past year, I've been selling significantly on eBay, Amazon, as well as Facebook Marketplace. And I tallied all this up to be about a couple thousand dollars. So as long as you don't go around trying to replace everything that you sold, you're permanently reducing all the stuff that you own, changing the way that you live, all that extra stuff, it's value right there. Whenever you have a physical object, even this thing is worth something, then you just convert all this to cash and then you just put it in your bank account and you can sort of consider this as making money online. Other way to sell your old stuff includes let go app, which I use myself. It's a very nice interface, but somehow, me using it as much as Facebook Marketplace, using it as much as eBay, I did not appear to get a lot of traction. I seem to have a lot of people that just try to lowball me on that particular application. This might differ a lot based on the location that you live. If you're interested in selling clothing, you can try Poshmark yourself. Now with all the layoffs, people might be hurting for money. You might be trying to scrimp together a little bit more money. And if you have gift cards laying around, maybe you got a $500 gift card from your work, but you don't really like going to that store. So then you can sell this on an online marketplace. One of them I like to use is called Raise. And if you sign up for this thing, you can get $5 just for signing up as long as you buy something that's $6 or more. So if you buy a $6 gift card, this might be a little bit hard to find because a lot of people probably thought of this and then they go buy the $6 gift card. But if you can find something like that, you can get $5 off of that and then you only have to pay $1 for a $6 gift card. Raise is good for buying gift cards and selling your old gift cards. The 17th way to make money online is through Airbnb. Now, if you guys sign up for this thing, you can get $55 off your first trip. So if it's a really cheap place, I know I've gotten something as cheap as $12 over in Tokyo per night in like a hostel like thing. So this is like four nights worth. But if you are more spendy and you want the whole place to yourself, maybe it'll be a little bit more expensive. So this is equivalent to maybe half night to one night free stay. If you wanna make money through this, you can refer other people to your Airbnb link. And then I think you can get about $20 worth of credits uh, for every person that signs up through your link. And if you decide to become a host, you can get $100 after your first free hosting. So if you lost a job and you have your own place, you could possibly think about just moving everybody into one single room 
And then if you have extra rooms, you can rent those out, and this could possibly help you tide over in these times of difficulties. The 18th way to make money online, well, not really online, but you know, online app is through Uber, and I've done this myself for two whole weeks. Check out over here in one week worth of full-time work for me, and I would have to say driving, it's kind of hard. When you drive for 12 hours a day, I've done that myself, you know, your back starts to get kind of numb. You really have to like, go out and walk around every chance that you get. The 19th one, which might be a good way to alternate between Ubering and more physical activity is if you work at an Amazon warehouse. So maybe you Uber one day, the next day you do Amazon warehouse because in an Amazon warehouse, you actually can't sit there all day. You actually have to stand all day. It is hard work in the sense that there's a lot of walking around and you have to be on your feet a lot. So. I personally am not very used to this because you know I used to work in an office environment. I just sit there all day. The 20th way to make money, I guess this is not quite online, which is from renting to tenants, right? If you are a landlord, if you bought a whole bunch of places and you have mortgages on them, or maybe you happen to be able to obtain these houses at a really, really low initial cost to yourself, and then you rely on your tenants to pay you money so that you can use that money to pay most of the mortgage off and then you, know, you have a little extra money to maintain the property. If you happen to have like five properties, 10 properties, the current situation is gonna be very, very difficult for a lot of landlords because if you look at the statistics, 30% of all people that rent are gonna have a hard time paying rent this current month. So if you have 10 tenants, probably on average, statistically speaking, you're gonna have three of them not being able to pay your rent, then it means you're not gonna be able to pay your mortgage if you do not have a large cash stash laying around. Then you possibly have to go and call your mortgage lender and see if you can delay your payment yourself. So when you are leveraged in this way, when you rely on a complete cash flow from your tenants to pay off your bills, this is a nice way to earn some money as an ongoing basis, but anytime you have a loan and you rely on an income source, those income sources could get cut off and you will still be on the hook for all those debts that you owe. So this is one of the reasons why I personally have not been too fond of buying more and more properties and renting it out. I actually don't really want to hire a management company even because they take a pretty huge cut. And sometimes you just like things to be simplified. I just have one place over here and instead I prefer to earn my money through investing instead. When you buy a stock, a share of Microsoft, right? It's never going to call you in the middle of the night and say, oh my gosh, my water heater broke or my toilet is broken or something. Those shares are not gonna bother you. It's just gonna sit there laying dormant and then if you don't like it, you can sell it, you can liquidate it pretty quickly. But if you have a property, you're gonna have to hold on to it for a very long time. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed different ways to make money. I know the last few is not quite making money online. You know, you gotta actually go out and drive. You actually have to own properties and stuff, but these are different ways that you can earn money and possibly help tide you over if you happen to be unemployed. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Check out all those referral links down in the video description below if you guys are interested in helping this channel out. Comment down below, let me know if these tips helped you. And as always, push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.